Version 10 introduces lots of enhancements to many of the drawing tools in the software to help improve and maximise workflow. So let's take a look at these improvements. Node editing can now be performed on multiple vectors selected at the same time, making it easier to access all the nodes and spans in your job for multiple editing without having to access each vector individually. We have also added the ability to transform your vectors directly from the span itself, allowing you to drag individual spans and changing their shape in the case of arcs and beziers, or moving the whole span in the case of lines, for a much easier intuitive workflow getting you to the shape you want in no time. In cases where you have two open vectors, you can select the endpoints of each vector and join them together whilst remaining in node edit mode using the right click menu, where you can join them with a straight line, a curve or the midpoint between the two. When rotating and scaling objects, the original bounds are now maintained, allowing you to scale rotated objects along their axes more easily and intuitively. To accommodate this enhancement, we've also updated various transformation tools to include the rotated bounds when making transformations to a rotated vector. And so in the move tool, we can now move objects relative to their rotated bounds. When we scale the size of a rotated object, we can now scale the parts in line with the rotated bounds of a selected object. In terms of rotation, you can now rotate objects to an absolute value as well as a relative value to the current bounds. When working with rotated objects in the mirror tool, we can check the option to use the rotated bounds and all mirroring applications will be relative to the bounds of the rotated object. When using the Distort tool on a rotated object, we can now edit the envelope within the rotated bounds, making it much easier to control the shape of the distortion. When you import a bitmap, you now have the ability to rotate it directly in the software using the rotation handles on the corners of the image. The font list in both the create and create text within a vector box form will now save the five most recently used fonts at the top of the list to allow quicker selection of frequently used fonts. That way you save time searching for that favourite font of yours. The number displayed can easily be edited in the program options form to a value that you are happy to use. The welding tool has been greatly improved to include the welding of text objects all at the click of a button, which is perfect for overlapping style fonts. Simply select your text, use the weld option where it will keep all of the internal regions of the text characters. And you have the option to keep or replace the original text object. You'll be welding text in no time. When text is placed on a curve, its anchor can now be freely moved, rather than being limited to the standard three predefined locations of left, right and centre, we can now move the anchor to give us much greater control of the position of the wrapped text. Another enhancement that we have made is that the wrapped text can be detached from the original curve and still be reworked in the wrapped text form, where it remembers the original settings of the wrap if you ever wanted to make further changes down the line.
We've added an extra option in the Draw Polygon form, where you're now able to create a polygon by specifying the length of a side. For example, if I wanted to create an equilateral triangle where all the sides are two inches long, I can simply specify this in the form and the software will do all the hard work for me. We've added in a shortcut to quickly get you into a shapes form for further editing. If a vector is selected which is able to be modified using one of the shape drawing tools, so the circle, ellipse, rectangle, polygon or star, then by simply pressing the letter E on your keyboard, the software will now automatically open the correct shape creation tool for the selected shape. We've updated the behaviour of the space selection controls within the alignment tools form, where it will now maintain the X or Y ordering of any selected vectors and space them between the top and bottom or left and right items in the selection, regardless of what order we selected the vectors in. Now we're going to explore the vast amount of new and enhanced features that we've added to toolpaths. The tool database has been given a significant overhaul, where different materials and machines can now be added and tooling information can be specific to these settings. So if you find that you are using the same tool but want different feeds and speeds for different materials, you can now just add a material and simply adjust the parameters of existing tools that will differ for the material that you are machining. And this really saves you the hassle of duplicating tools. Simply add a new material, give that material a name and then press apply. And then select the tool you already have stored in the database that you wish to copy the settings from and then you can just make your adjustments to the tool to suit the material that you're machining into. And so you can see that when I switch between plywood and hardwood, I am using the same tool but the parameters and feeds differ making my database more organised and this ability to change cutting parameters whilst keeping the geometry the same prevents a lot of duplication in your tool database. And when you are ready to machine you can filter the tools where you can select to view only the tools that are compatible with your selected material by using the right click option. We've made improvements to the way that you can actually name your tools. Simply click on the edit tool name icon where the name format mechanism will open, allowing you to choose what information is displayed for the tools. So by default here, you can see that I have a field for the tool type, an end mill, the diameter, whether that's in a fraction form or as a value, and then the units, where the short option now displays inches correctly and you can customise what fields you want to show using the right-click menu. And so by entering the field information, when I now come to edit various parameters in the tool database, the software will automatically update the name, ensuring that the tool name always matches the tool dimensions. You also have the ability to view the chip load on the tool from within the software where you can now add the number of flutes a tool has and the chip load will be calculated accordingly. And for more information and to see the tool database in action, please take a look at the tool database and migrate in your tool database guide tutorials from the tutorial browser. It's now easy to share your tool database across the machines that you use. The new tool database can be synced with your online Vinco account so that changes made to the tool database on one machine are reflected across your other running instances. Simply log into your Vinco account directly from the tool database and in the software you are now able to upload and import your tool database from your Vinco account, making it much easier to access your updated tool and information across all machines. 
The toolpaths that use the raster strategy should now generate more consistent toolpaths in regards to their machine and direction. To help avoid instances where the tool would come back to clear out an area in the cutout which could cause the material to break away. When creating lithophanes in the software, you now have the option to visualise the lithophane effect on your simulated toolpaths, making it easier to see what your part will look like before cutting. The lithophane mode allows the preview to be shaded to give the effect of a semi-transparent material which is being lit from behind as you would with a lithophane, where the thinnest areas of the material will appear the brightest. Just enable the lithophane mode from within the simulation and use the slider to adjust the brightness to suit. And so this function will help to determine what the finished part will look like when we cut it on the CNC. Toolpaths can now be grouped within the toolpath tree, making managing complex jobs more straightforward. Right click in the toolpath tree and choose the option to create a group. This enables you to organise your toolpaths into logical groups. Simply drag the toolpaths into the group desired. And then to remove a group, right click and select delete this. we will be prompted to choose to keep or delete the sub toolpaths within the list. When you save out toolpaths, we've made it easier to locate your favourite posts where the post processor list will now save and display the five most recently used post processors at the top of the list, allowing for quicker selection of frequently used posts. So now let's take a look at some of the changes that we've made to the user interface. We've made it easier to add new material textures to the software, directly from the appearance drop-down menus. If you have a picture of the material you want to add, you can just select Add New Texture from within the appearance drop-down menu. For example, I want to add an aluminium texture to my metals category, so simply click on Add New Texture, locate your bitmap, press Open and that material will be stored in your drop-down menu. You can also create your own category too. Head to the top of the list and click New Category, give it a name and then add in your material textures. And so the whole process of importing bitmap textures directly from within the software has been made much easier. For your convenience, all the tabs in the software are now resizable, where you can pull the tabs out to expand it to fit even the longest of names, ensuring that you have full visibility of the longer named items in your project. Version 10 adds the ability to use different settings for default file locations. So that means that you can now choose to have the software remember specific locations for specific actions. And so you could initially choose a folder where you would always like to open images from. For example, you could choose your pictures directory and the software will remember and use that location for future reference. This ability to remember file locations applies to all items that can be saved and imported in the software. To do this, simply go to Edit, then go into Options, and then select the file Dialog Default. Select Operation to open files in the last used location for this operation. So you will need to initially save or import items from a location to enable the software to remember this. Now, as I've already done this, you can see that I can now import images from my pictures folder. I can then go ahead and create some vectors. And if I wanted, I could export those vectors out to the last location I saved or imported vectors from, which is from my vector folder. And then I can go ahead and create a toolpath from my vectors and then look at saving out the toolpaths to my predefined toolpath saving location, giving me complete control over where I save things to for a more organised, efficient workflow.
Alternatively, you could choose to always open the file dialogues in the folder of the current project. Getting help in the software has never been easier, as now you can get help for all the forms using the handy integrated help functionality. Simply click on the question mark icon on the top of each form to get the help for that specific function. Helping you get to the documentation quicker and easier directly from the tool you want to learn more about.